In this video, we're going to look at the k-means clustering algorithm. It's probably the most popular clustering method out there. We're going to look at the steps in the algorithm, and then we're going to see how that uh, those steps are executed on a small data set. Let's say we're given a data set like this one. The data set consists of items. Each item has two features, uh, x1 and uh, x2. The data set is unlabeled, so each of the items, this one, this one, and this one, we just have for each of those items the value of x1 and x2. We don't have a target value that we're trying to predict. This is all we're given. We might want to use this data set to find some structure in the data. We might want to uh, make sense of this data in some way. And one task that we could consider is clustering. So the goal in clustering is basically to group the different items into the, um, in the data set so that each group contains items that are similar to each other and the items in one group should um, be different from items in another group. There are a number of different clustering algorithms, but here we're just going to look at k-means clustering. And the k-means clustering algorithm is actually given on, on this part of the slide. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly read through the steps and then we'll go through a step-by-step -step example where we actually use k-means to cluster this data set. So the first step in the k-means clustering algorithm is to randomly assign each item xn to one of the k clusters. In other words, we just randomly say this item belongs to cluster 1, this item belongs to cluster 2, this item also belongs to cluster 2, this one belongs to cluster 1, this one belongs to cluster 3, and so on. So for each of the items, we throw a k-sided dice and just um, assign that item to that cluster. I should have said that before we start the algorithm, we also need to decide how many clusters are we going to use, what's the value of k. Okay, but if you've decided that, um, then you can easily assign each of the items to a random cluster. That's the first step. The second step, um, that's where the algorithm really kicks off. Um, and what we'll do is we'll continue to keep um, repeating this step until basically nothing changes. So the first sub-step in um, step number two is to run through all of your clusters. So you have a number of clusters, and for each of them, um, from cluster 1 to cluster k, you calculate the cluster centroid, uk, as the mean of all the items assigned to the cluster k. Okay, that will make sense in a, in a second, but the centroid um, is basically a point in this two-dimensional space representing kind of, you can think of it as the average or the mean of the points assigned to cluster k. So mu k is kind of the, the middle point uh, for cluster k. And then in this um, B sub-step, then we run through all of the items. So we go through all of the items from 1 to N, so we consider each one of these points. And for each of them, for each Xn, we assign that Xn to the cluster with the closest centroid. So we're basically going to look um, at all the centers of the different clusters, and we're going to assign a particular item to the cluster that has its center closest to the item that we're looking at. That probably didn't make any sense, um, and that's perfectly fine. Um, let's step through an example, and then hopefully after the example, uh, all these steps are perfectly clear. We should probably first decide how many clusters are we going to use. And for our example, let's just use, um, for the example, let's just use three clusters. Okay. So in our example, k is equal to three. And what we do in this first step for each of these points, we simply decide whether that point belongs to cluster one, two, or three. The result might look something like this. So what I've done is I've colored the different clusters. So um, cluster 1 might be orange, cluster 2 might be green, and cluster 3 might be blue. Okay, and we've, uh, we're looking at step number 1 here. We've just randomly assigned each of the Xn's to one of the clusters. Okay, great stuff. So now we're going to go on to step number 2, and of course we're going to start with step number 2a. Okay, so step number 2a says that for each of the clusters, for each of my three clusters, 
so from 1 to 3. Calculate the cluster centroid, mu1, mu2, mu3, as the mean of all the items assigned to that cluster. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that, um, let's say we're looking at the green cluster, okay? The green cluster here has a whole bunch of points that have been randomly assigned to the cluster. And what we'll do is we'll calculate the mean or the average of all of those points, okay? You simply add up all the x vectors and you divide by the number of vectors and that gives you, uh, again, in this case, a two-dimensional vector, which would be the center of that cluster, okay? And we repeat that step for also for the orange cluster and also for the blue cluster. So in step 2a on this diagram, I've just indicated the three different centroids with these uh, little x's. Uh, this centroid is the orange one, this one is the green one, and this one is the blue one. Okay, so this orange one is basically the average vector, the mean vector of all the currently assigned orange items. Okay, cool. That's step 2a, simple as that. What we will do now is we'll go on to step 2b. So before I show you the result, let's just look at that step and, and think what will happen. So in step 2b, it says run through all of your items from 1 to n. So we will consider each one of these points, okay, all of the points. And then what we do is we assign each of the points to the cluster with the closest centroid. That means, for example, this point here. This point is currently assigned to the green cluster. Okay, but now we're going to change that assignment. We're going to assign that point to which cluster, the blue, the green, or the orange. We're going to change it so that it belongs to the orange um, cluster because the orange cluster's centroid is closest um, to this point. Okay, and we look at each of the points. Okay, so for example, uh, let's say this point here, which class which cluster, which centroid is closest to this point? Well, I'll, I can calculate the distance to, to the orange centroid, to the green centroid, and to the blue centroid. And you will see, of course, that the distance to the orange centroid is closest. So this point will also be assigned um, to the orange cluster. In fact, all of these points here will be assigned to the orange cluster. Okay, let's think about this point here. Again, what you'll do is you'll calculate the distance to the blue, to the green and to the orange, okay? And then this point as well will be assigned to the closest um, centroid, which in this case is the blue centroid, okay? So this point here will change from green, currently it's in the green cluster, that point will change to the blue cluster. And in fact, I think most of the points up here will be assigned to the blue cluster. The green cluster, uh, sad cluster, eh? small cluster, because this cluster will only contain uh, probably this point, right? Because this point is probably closest to the green cluster and maybe that point, maybe a few of these points, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll just have Python figure that out. Okay, so let's look at the result. On the next slide, what I will do is I will show the result of running step 2b. And as expected, the points here have been assigned to the orange cluster. The points there in the middle just those few points have been assigned to the green cluster oh, guy. Um, and then the points at the top, most of them have been assigned to the blue cluster. So what do we do now? We're in a loop, right? So what happens in loops? You go out and you repeat it, okay? So now we go out and we go back into step 2a. Okay. Now before I show you the result of step 2a for the second iteration, Let's just think again what's going to happen. So in step 2a, for cluster k is equal to 1 um, to k is equal to 3, okay, in other words, for uh, the orange cluster, green cluster, and blue cluster, calculate the centroid mu k as the mean of all the items assigned to that cluster. Okay, so what does this mean? Let's just look at the orange cluster and then um, um, the same thing will happen with the blue and the green clusters. So for the orange cluster, currently, the points we have assigned to that cluster basically is this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, and then the bunch of points here. The centroid, so we're trying to calculate mu, the centroid for this specific cluster, and that centroid will simply be the average or the mean vector of all of those points. 
And the result is, I think, that the centroid here is probably going to move this way, right? It's going to move uh, in this direction because most of the points are down here, okay? Um, it's not going to move completely away from these points because these points still have an effect on the, on the, um, on the mean. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it will land somewhere here. The centroid will move, um, will move there, okay? And that's really ugly. Let's just redraw that. Okay, and that's a super beautiful dashed line. But okay, so uh, I'm guessing here, again, right, I'm going to have Python figure out where this vector lands, but um, it's probably going to move somewhere there. Um, for the green vector, uh, for, the, for the green centroid, it's probably going to stay pretty close to where it is at the moment because it's just the mean of those, I think, four, five points. Um, and the blue centroid is probably going to go up this side. Okay, so instead of keeping on guessing where the centroids land, let's just see what is the result of doing step A in the second iteration. And as you can see, uh, I didn't lie to you, the blue centroid moved from somewhere here, it moved up, the orange centroid has been pulled down here, and the green centroid stayed more or less where it is. So this slide shows the result for the second iteration, we're in the second um, basically go time going through the loop, and um, this is the result after we've updated the centroids. What will we do next? We will go on to step B, and what we will do is we will run through all of our points again from n equal to 1 up to big N, each of these points, and what we will do is we will assign it to the centroids that, that's closest. Now, what will happen is, I'm guessing that all of these points will still be assigned to the orange centroid, okay? The green centroid, um, the sad one, I think is going to become just a little bit happier, not a lot, okay? But uh, the centroid is probably going to get these points as well, right? Because now, this for this point, for example, the centroid is closer than the point, um, than the centroid down here, than the orange centroid. So all of these points are probably going to be assigned to the green centroid. And then also some of these blue points here will be closer to the green centroid than they are to the blue centroid up here. Let's see the result of step 2b in the second iteration. Okay, again, I didn't lie to you. We're in the second iteration. We're now in step b. This is the result um, of executing step b. And you can see that more or less what I predicted would happen, did happen. What will happen next? We will just continue, right? The step two says repeat, so let's repeat. So after step two being the second iteration, we're going to go out, we're going to go in our third time that we're repeating the steps, okay? And in step A again, we ask, how are we going to update the orange and the green and the blue centroids? And you can see from the result that um, the orange centroid did move in a little bit and the blue centroid did move up a little bit and the green one maybe also moved a little bit. So this is in the third iteration, the result from executing step A. Okay, and we go on, right? So let's just, um, I think you get the, the picture now. So let's just go to step 2B. Now you can see what's going to happen is actually in this step, there were actually a few points here that were blue um, at the previous slide. You can just go back in the video a little bit if you don't believe me. But there were just a few green points that have um, been reassigned from the blue cluster to the green cluster. But after doing this steps for a few iterations, then what's going to happen is things are basically going to stabilize in the sense that um, the clusters are going to just stay put um, and the items aren't going to change assignment, okay? So this item here is going to stick to the orange cluster and um, even the items on the boundary will stick to either the green or the blue cluster. If the item assignment doesn't change, that means my centroids will also not change because the centroids are based on which items are assigned to which cluster. So basically then what's going to happen is um, you're not going to do anything in the iterations. And that's an obvious place where you can then say, um, repeat until cluster assignments stop changing. So as soon as the cluster assignments don't change anymore, you can just um, stop uh, running the algorithm and you can jump out. Um, practically, if your data set is 
very big and you have very high dimensional data, then you might want to set just a number of uh, maximum number of iterations here. You might want to say, listen, don't run for more than a thousand iterations. Even if the cluster assignments are still changing a little bit, I'm happy with the answer. Uh, I don't have uh, infinite amounts of time. So please just stop and give me an answer. And that is basically the k-means algorithm. Um, I think from the details in um, this video, you will actually already be able to implement the k-means algorithm almost from scratch. Um, in the next video, I just want to give a little bit more detail and make things uh, mathematically precise um, so that you really get the full picture of what k-means is doing.